international first class at a business class fare. That's the difference on Continental. Accommodations provided by Hilton. For 75 years, all of us at Hilton have been making it our job to make you feel welcome. Hilton, so nice to come home to. Eligible recordings are entered by members of the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences and by record companies. These entries are then voted on solely by the Academy's active members, those who are creatively involved in making the recordings. The first round of voting determines the nominations. The second determines the winners. The results of both rounds are tabulated by the independent accounting firm of Deloitte & Touche. America's missing children. No special ribbon. No powerful Washington lobby. Just the grim. Helping people with disabilities is what Easter Seals does best. The best way you can show your support is by making a pledge on the Easter Seal Telethon on WYAU TV, March 5th and 6th. Together, we can make a difference. Be a part of the Easter Seal Telethon live at the Lycoming Mall in Muncie on Sunday. Give ability a chance. A big development tonight in the case of a stabbing in Oliphant. We'll have the details on that breaking story for you in just a moment. But first, Barry Thin has a first look at the weather. Okay, Deb, let's everybody take a first look at the re most recent satellite photograph and a humongous storm. Now getting organized, it'll be here tomorrow. And John Nugent with the first look at sports. John? We have District 4 and District 11 playoff action tonight. Highlights of Bloomsburg's win. Joe DeMelfi, Coach of the Year, and we'll have a preview of the Pennsylvania Golden Gloves. This is News 22 tonight. Now, from WYOU Television, the 24-hour news source, this is News 22. Good evening. Police have made an arrest in a Sunday night stabbing in Lackawanna County. The suspect is charged with attempted murder and could face additional charges of sexually abusing children. Jennifer Watson is live in our newsroom with the story. Jennifer? Deb, the arrest came late tonight. Police say the suspect, 25-year-old John Dunmire of Oliphant, threatened the victim before the stabbing. That's because police believe that Dunmire knew that the victim, 46-year-old Stephen Burrick, was coming to confront him about allegations Dunmire was sexually abusing young boys. Dunmire was brought before District Justice John Piesky in Dixon City tonight and arraigned on the attempted murder charges. He's jailed in lieu of $200,000 bail. All of the uh, alleged uh, victims are being interviewed. Uh, Police have been out, the Alton police and our detectives have been out all day today and uh, will be out tomorrow uh, following up on it. Uh, we're certain that other charges will be forthcoming in regard to uh, sexual conduct uh, with the juveniles uh, the defendant had. Investigators say there were seven juvenile boys in Dunmire's apartment at the time of the stabbing. Police say more charges will be filed and that as many as 20 young boys may have been victims in the case. Because he is jailed, prosecutors say that they will ask that Dunmire be tested for sexually transmitted diseases, but additionally, they'll ask a court to test Dunmire for the HI virus. Burrick is under intensive care at Community Medical Center in Scranton. Dunmire had no comment. Deb? Thank you, Jennifer. In Luzerne County, another man was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. But tonight, he is a free man. Years of appeals and legal wrangling ended today when John Travis of Wilkesbury was released from the state prison at Dallas. Kevin Jordan in Luzerne County tonight with the story. 34-year-old John Dominic Travis of Wilkesbury walked out of prison a free man. Are you happy with the outcome of all of this? Well, I don't think I should have been convicted to begin with, but yeah, I'm happy to be out. I didn't do a damn thing. You didn't do it? No, these people just ruined my life. Travis has always maintained he is innocent of the strangulation death of Charlene Fedor. The 36-year-old Hanover Township woman's partially nude body was found in Mill Creek in July 1990. Well, I, obviously, the Superior Court uh, 
uh, agreed with our position that there was just not enough evidence to convict him. The state superior court overturned the Travis conviction. When the prosecution appealed, Travis remained in jail. And let, let them appeal all they want, but I shouldn't have to sit in jail while they appeal. The state Supreme Court upheld the lower court and ordered Travis's release. Prosecutors have not given up. Right now, we're working actively with the appellate division of the Philadelphia DA's office, uh, attempting to find a way to launch an appeal in the United States Supreme Court. I'm free. Travis says during four years in jail, he dreamed of freedom. Now he's left to reflect on what he says were four wasted years behind barbed wire and barbs. This controversial case could end up in the highest court in the land. The issues are complex legal ones. If there's one thing that prosecutors and the defense can agree on, it is that the killer of Charlene Fedor now walks the streets. Kevin Jordan, News 22 at the Luzerne County Courthouse, Wilkes-Barre. A Luzerne County couple is behind bars tonight for killing their son. Larry and Leona Cottom were convicted back in 1989 of starving to death their 14-year-old son, Eric. The Cottoms have remained free on bail while they've exhausted all appeals in the state court system. The deadline to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court came and went yesterday, so this morning it was back to jail. I, I told them, I said, you're not going to police, you know, you're under arrest. And they said, okay, you know, we're, we're ready to go. So then we, uh, you know, did what we had to do, search and make sure everything was okay. Uh, Sheriff's Department took custody of them, and uh, I guess they're on their way. Larry and Leona Cottom were sentenced to 5 to 12 years in prison. They'll get credit for time served after their arrest, but it will still be years before either Cottom is eligible for parole. A Jim Thorpe couple could face almost 300 citations for their mistreatment of animals. About 90 dead birds and 40 live but sickly ones were taken from Michael and Teresa Mesher's pet shop last week. Authorities say the couple is facing a long set of citations. citations filed for each and every animal that were in the bird shop, including the 100 plus birds and the cat that were there. They'll be getting charges filed on neglect and um, failure to provide food and water and um, failure to provide sanitary conditions. The measures could face as many as 300 citations at a potential cost of $300 apiece. Authorities say they also intend to file another set of citations for the alleged mistreatment of dogs and rabbits taken from the Mesher's Little Gap home last Friday. And still to come on News 22 tonight, a giant step towards peace in Bosnia. And a CIA agent accused of spying for Russia is behind bars without bail. Well, the first time I tried it, it was like, whoa, this is a new experience. Arm & Hammer Dental Care Tartar Control Gel. What's it like the first time? It's just like I left the dentist chair. You know that polished feeling you get when the tartar's gone and your teeth feel brand new? Arm & Hammer. Everybody around here like them. He escaped from prison, got mad. Fresh from the dentist feeling anytime I feel like it. Arm & Hammer Tartar Control Gel for that fresh from the dentist feeling of clean. And now introducing that healthy feeling in new neat and easy stand-up tubes. Look for them in your store today. At St. Anne's Monastery, we're known for giving help, not asking for it. Over the years, we've opened our arms to thousands of pilgrims to our solemn novena. But the ravages of time are now showing. Bricks are crumbling. Windows are cracking. The roof is leaking. Please, help us restore the church to its past glory and prepare St. Anne's for a future that will hopefully see a designated a basilica. To offer your gift, call 1-800-IN-FAITH. A perfect look won't make you wealthier, kinder, or wiser, but a Sanderson Place look will put you on top of the world. Sanderson Place, Salon and Day Spa, a new wave into the future. From WYOU, the 24-hour news source, this is the News 22 Williamsport Report, brought to you by your local subway.
Two of four units from the Navy Reserve Center in Williamsport are part of the Pentagon's latest round of military cutbacks. Over 4,000 military reserve units in the state are being affected. A spokesperson at the Reserve Center in the city says although two units have been made inactive, the change was anticipated and all personnel have been moved to other positions. Everyone is gearing up to get more snow this week. For people in Williamsport, well, they just want to get rid of it. it. Seems snow emergency parking isn't working in the city and roads aren't being plowed properly. City officials held a public meeting yesterday to hear what solutions residents might have. Uh, maybe we contact some of the local churches or nonprofits, uh, the hospitals. Those persons that have uh, large parking lots in neighborhoods or in the downtown section, even the municipal lot, and have those areas somewhat cleared and park cars in those areas while we go ahead and try to get the snow back as close to the curb as possible. Mayor Phil Preziosi admits that the suggestions probably won't be considered for a few months, but definitely in time for next season's snowfall. The excitement of the Winter Olympics is dying down, but for some people in Williamsport, seeing a glimpse of the summer games brought back a little bit of that excitement. His name, Vitaly Sherbo. He won six gold medals in the games in 1992, competing for the former Soviet Union. In 1996, he hopes he'll represent Belarus in the gymnastic competition. Sherbo was in the area for a commercial photo shoot and worked out for two days at the Dynamats Gymnastic Center in Williamsport. And of course, I don't have time for workout to preparing to be competition. That's why I try anywhere where uh, I'm travel to working. Sherbo is on his way to compete for the McDonald's Cup in Orlando, Florida, before he heads back to Belarus to train, hopefully, for Olympic gold number seven. For men in search for the world's greatest... He's Vitaly Sherba, winner of six Olympic gold medals in Barcelona. He continues his journey toward Atlanta in 96. The powerhouse of Belarus is the one to beat. Can he defend his McDonald's American Cup? Atlanta. Hi everybody, I'm Dan Hicks and we welcome you to Orlando. Now for some of these gymnasts, the World Championships are just six weeks away. Shannon Miller of the United States hoping to successfully defend that title. Now, since the competition is just a little ways away, Shannon Miller has not had a chance. She's been injured. Last night in the preliminary competition, she made just an abbreviated appearance. So as she looks forward to the World Championships, let's go down and join Marianne Grabovoy with a developing story with Shannon. Thanks, Dan. World champion Shannon Miller is such a fierce competitor that for her to be sitting on the sidelines here is unfamiliar and very frustrating territory. Now, just this past Monday, in a training session in her gym in Oklahoma City, she pulled a stomach muscle. She came to Orlando on Thursday evening, and last night, here at the preliminary competition, she competed in just one event, and that was the vault. We're going to take a look at a, the second pass of the vault. It's a new vault for Shannon Miller. She ended up with a 9.625. Good enough for a fifth place finish in the event, being congratulated by her coach, Steve Nuno. Now, rather than risk further injury, she scratched from the other three events. But she had to be introduced at each apparatus, touch the apparatus, for it to be an official qualification. Now, for Shannon, this meet was her qualifying meet for the World Championship team. She needed only a top six finish in one event to go to the Worlds in Australia in six weeks. And the vault did that for her. So Shannon Miller, American Cup reigning champion, had the rest of the night off. She had a chance to talk with 12-year-old Jenny Thompson, who trains with her, and is being hailed as the next Shannon Miller. Well, we'll meet her in just a little bit. Joining me now is Shannon Miller and her coach, Steve Nuno. Shannon, how did the injury happen? Um, well, Monday it was just during training, I think, with um, me getting prepared for this competition and working out really hard. I just kind of overdid it. <laughs> and how's the muscle now? Are you having therapy? How does it feel? Um, it feels like it's getting better. I think just rest is going to help it. 
anybody who knows you knows you want to go out there and do it. This has got to be very frustrating for you. Yeah, it is. I would much rather be competing right now. It's hard to sit here and watch. Steve, who made the decision to pull her from this competition? Well, obviously, Marianne, I, I think that I had to make the decision because Shannon had her heart set on defending her title here, but uh, well, I didn't want to risk any further damage. If there was a, a serious problem, uh, we didn't know the extent of it, and she has the world championships coming up, so it was me. So the prudent course of action was a conservative one? I think so. I think I had to just play it safe this time around with the world championships coming up in six weeks. Thank you both. Heal well and quickly. All the best down the road. And Dan, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Marianne. Now I'm joined by our expert commentators, uh, Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett. First of all, on the women's side, with Shannon Miller out of the competition, the favorite would have to be Dominique Dawes, who looked very impressive last night, finishing first in the preliminaries. Dan, I'd have to say Dominique Dawes is by far one of the most underrated athletes. She's not just good, she's great. We have to remember, she came so close to winning an all-around world championship medal last year, and last night in the preliminary competition, even with the fall, she was the leader of the pack. Now, I'm not saying this will be an easy victory for Dominique today. In fact, two of her greatest rivals come from, no surprise, the former Soviet Republic. Well, Tim Daggett, the king of gymnastics for the past several years, including the 92 Olympic Games, six gold medals, Vitaly Sherba, but lately, he hasn't been so invincible. Well, you know, when you're on top, Dan, you get more opportunities, but sometimes opportunities can turn into distractions, and in my opinion, that's been one of the problems for Vitaly Sherbo. In the past, it was all preparation so he could have a perfect competition. Now he's maybe not quite as focused. A footnote there, though, American John Roethlisberger is having the competition of a lifetime. And a look at the latest men's standings. John Roethlisberger finishing first in the preliminary competition last night is making another very serious charge at Vitaly Sherba, who finished second. Just four tenths of a point behind is Sherbo. And a look at the latest women's standings. Dominique Dawes of the United States. These are the standings after just one rotation. Elena Pascoon of Belarus. And Lilia Potkapayeva of Ukraine. And Elodie Lusak of France tied for third. And first up on the uneven parallel bars is Dominique Dawes of the United States, number one in the preliminaries last night. Now, Dan, Dominique, she has to be just a little bit nervous about this routine. Coming up very early, her first element, in fact, is the one that she missed in last night's competition. Here it goes. And of course, you knew going into today's competition, she was not going to make the same mistake. Now, it was flawless, Dan. I really don't know what to say. There's absolutely no criticism. Right to the very last move, full twisting, double back, dismount, nails it. Absolutely beautiful. Dominique Doss, 17 years old from Silver Springs, Maryland. You saw her coach, Kelly Hill. And now, Vitaly Sherba. And this is certainly one of Vitaly's better events, but... Over the past weekend, we have seen some problems here. Put both his hands down in the preliminary competition. As we've said, he is very, very, very steady in competition, but this American Cup has looked just a little bit rattled. And today, he is feeling the heat from American John Roethlisberger. Big vault here, double twisting, laid out Yurchenko. Absolutely no problems there. Wow. As he addresses the crowd there, this is about the most difficult ball being done today. Watch this. He leaves the horse. A huge push. Two complete twists. And this is the key right there. Bam. From above, we can see just how complicated this is. He does one and a half flips with two complete twists. And once again, he nails the landing. 
He seems to be back on his game, but uh, the last three all-around meets, Tim, uh, he has failed to win the all-around gold, and that is very unusual. As we await the score of Dominique Dawes, a 9.875 in the uneven bars. Excellent score for Dominique. As we await the score of 22-year-old Vitaly Sherva at this McDonald's American Cup last year. Had his first daughter. She's now a year old, and according to Vitaly, she's on the run. And the score for Vitaly a 9.7. That's a great score for the Vols. And now in the uneven parallel bars, Chow Ya of China, just 15 years old. The Chinese, Dan, are exceptional on this apparatus. You're going to see a lot of innovation. Watch for some beautiful body lines. It's a giant with a half turn into a beautiful Jaeger Salto and a very original, I was going to say some innovation. That was an extremely difficult pack Salto. However, she did have to take a stop. That is a major deduction. Big dismount, double front with a half twist. A really rough day for her on uneven bars. Yesterday, she had a fantastic routine. You, you know, LP, they're so good technically, but they seem to always not quite have the strength it takes to get out of a problem. Usually they are such exceptional swingers on the uneven bars. They move with such fluidity, and I'm quite surprised to see the mistakes that she made today. But the bars, uh, really the one event, LP, that the uh, Chinese have really excelled at. And a look at... Wang Dong of China having an excellent American Cup, 18 years old. One of China's up-and-coming stars. He was second this past summer at the World University Games in Buffalo to the famous Vitaly Sherbo. Doesn't quite have the difficulty in his vault that we just saw from, Sher from Sherbo. But on this event, power is the most important thing, and the Chinese men are always extremely powerful on the leg events. Laid out Sukahara, and he also sticks the landing, but as you saw, not quite as dramatic, not quite as explosive as Vitaly Sherbo. Very good vault. This is a full twisting Sukahara, but not quite the repulsion. You see his body doesn't rise off of the horse the same way that we saw from Vitaly Sherbo. Wang Dong, fourth in the preliminary competition last night. Ninth in the vault competition. And while we wait to Wang Dong score, we see the score of Chow Ya, 9.1 on the uneven bars. At this level of competition, that should take her pretty much right out of the hunt. So you can add Wang Dong's name to the equation with Vitaly Sherba and John Roethlisberger challenging for this 12th annual McDonald's American Cup back to Orlando in a moment. This American Cup and during this American Cup McDonald's will donate a thousand dollars to the training fund of the male and female gymnast who Add something extra to the routine, a new move or twist or spectacular performance. The McDonald's Extra Twist Award is part of McDonald's overall commitment to athletic achievement. John Roethlisberger hoping to add an extra twist or two to his routines today. He has the lead right now over Vitaly Sherba. And Vitaly Sherba, the reigning world champion. The leader in the women's competition, Dominique Dawes of the United States. She won the preliminaries last night, but a girl who challenged was 12-year-old Jenny Thompson. And for more on her, let's go down to the floor and join Marianne Grabovoy. Thanks, Dan. Jenny Thompson is a mere four foot one, 58 pounds. She has tremendous athletic ability and steely resolve. And hers is the face of the future of American gymnastics. And like Shannon Miller before her, Jenny Thompson's now the one to watch. Father Time isn't very kind to gymnasts, 
fortunes are fleeting and fresh young faces emerge from the shadows all the time. Now comes Jenny Thompson, a 12-year-old whose hero is an ancient 17-year-old named Shannon Miller. I look at her and just think how much she's done. When she competes, she just seems to make everything perfect. She's kind of a role model. And what does Shannon Miller think of her protege? I think she has a lot of potential and I think by 96 she'll be all polished up and ready to go. A seventh grader at Hefner Junior High in Oklahoma City, Jenny Thompson grew up in Wichita Falls, Texas, and for the past eight of her 12 years, she's juggled the life of an ordinary schoolgirl with that of an extraordinary elite gymnast. Mark the name down because Jenny Thompson's determined to make her mark in this most arduous of sports. And she knows she's been lucky to have Shannon Miller, world champion, pave the way for her. They've trained together for the past year in Steve Nuno's Oklahoma gym. Jenny has privileges that Shannon never had. Jenny has Shannon. Shannon never had a Shannon to work out with. And she's been able to look at and watch Shannon's career and say, hey, that's, that's a neat road to take. Let's go down that road. And that's, I think, uh, a guiding light for, for Jenny. A guiding light and an inspiration whose presence is felt in her life each and every day. Some say you can smell the sunrise in Oklahoma. Well, just a few short years ago, unknown Shannon Miller hardly poked her head out from beneath a blanket on early morning rides to the gym to get a whiff. Now, those wake-up calls belong to Jenny Thompson and her mom, who have taken a house in Oklahoma to train with Nuno, while Jenny's brother and father live in Dallas, Texas. An emotional sacrifice? You bet. A financial strain? all for a dream in the making. For two and a half years, the family was together in Texas when Jenny trained in Bella Caroli's gym, but the Transylvanian guru retired, and Jenny was just beginning her journey, one that would and will have its shares of trials and tribulations. But Jenny Thompson knows she must stay the course. There'll be her share of little girl tears, you can be sure. But Jenny Thompson knows the big girls shed tears too. From Shannon Miller, Jenny Thompson knows there'll be days just like this. But from Shannon Miller, she also knows that all things are possible. They share the same fierce focus and strength of character. Shannon Miller, five Olympic medals in tow, has set the standard for Jenny Thompson to reach and push beyond. Already, she's done that. Jenny became the youngest ever U.S. Junior National Champion just last year. I admire her because she does work hard and she's very talented and she sticks with it no matter what. She does the best that she can in the gym every day, and that helps her in competition. I've worked seven years, almost, to go somewhere with this. And later, when I'm a senior, and I can, like, I'm old enough to go to Worlds and stuff, I'd like to place high in Worlds and hopefully make the Olympic team. Jenny may look to the heavens for inspiration, but she's already found more than a little right here on Earth. Well, Coach Steve Nuno says Jenny Thompson has the grace of Shannon Miller, the power of Kim Zemeskel, and a little bit of the personality of Mary Lou Retton. Well, will Jenny have as much success as those champions? Time will tell. It'll be exciting to watch. Dan, back to you. Thank you, Mary Ann. There's Jenny Thompson live with Shannon Miller, her coach is Steve Nuno, and uh, it was a real thrill to see uh, Jenny Thompson and Shannon Miller, even though Shannon Miller's competition was abbreviated last night, uh, they were on the floor at the same time, and uh, little Jenny Thompson wandered away from one of the apparatuses too soon, and they had to bring her back, and it was uh, one of the few times we've seen Shannon Miller smile on the floor as well during a competition. Well, hey, Dan, this was her moment last night. This was a huge competition for Jenny Thompson, and perfect timing two years away from the Olympic Games and she really needed this competition and I think we'll see a lot more from Jenny Thompson in the future. First year on the senior national team for Jenny Thompson. Now we're ready for our first look at Lilia Potkapayeva, 15 years old from Ukraine. 
And this is just her second competition in the United States, but one of the many international young faces to watch here. Certainly, Dan, we talk about Jenny Thompson being the future for, for America. Well, Lilia Potkapayeva is certainly the future of the Ukraine. I first saw her at the World Championships last year. Rough around the edges, uh, perhaps a little intimidated at the World Championships, but let me tell you, she has cleaned up her act tremendously. To me, probably one of the greatest packages in gymnastics today. She's clean. She has the difficulty. She's very polished and very graceful. Setting up for her first release move. Take a look at the body form. Giant top, giant fold. Here's a release. Super high, beautifully done, but there's an extra swing. Now that is going to cost her. I don't think I've seen her do that once in practice or the competition last night. There's a dismount for twisting double back. A small hop on the landing, but an extra swing. You can't afford those types of mistakes. You know, Elfie, it's really kind of mistakes that we didn't see from the former Soviet republics in the past. Take another look at the release move. Our next it's actually, actually working backwards here. But you can see the body form was superb. I will give her that. She was absolutely beautiful on the bars. But you, you can't take extra swings. Those are just little deductions that she's throwing away to the judges. Lilia Potkapayeva, fan of uh, Oksana Bayul, also of Ukraine, of course the gold medalist in figure skating at the Winter Olympics, likes her style, and now our first look at Cheney Umphrey of the United States. He qualified third last night from Albuquerque, New Mexico, living in Los Angeles, and training at UCLA. And you know, uh, Dan, the thing you have to be most fearful about when Cheney's vaulting is that he doesn't break the horse because he's probably <laughs> one of the strongest competitors in the competition. Full twisting Sukahara. Big push, but a big hop back, and then another little bit of a shimmy there on the landing. Vaulting has never really been one of Cheney's strong points. Now, once again, we pointed this out, Sherbo, who kind of is the, the epitome of a vaulter. He just explodes right there. Cheney really doesn't get the height off of the horse that you need to, and because of that, doesn't have the time he needs to stick that landing. Five feet seven, 150 pounds. Cheney Humphrey, Lilia Portkapaeva, the score for her, 9.35 on the uneven bars. And next up, the second qualifier for the United States, Larissa Fontaine. We please welcome all of the bars from Deerfield, 16 Florida, years old. Academy of Gymnastics. Here's Larissa Fontaine. Dominique Dawes, the number one qualifier for the United States last night. Larissa Fontaine finishing fifth. Interesting, talking to Larissa's coach just prior to this competition, he said that she was having a bit of a conditioning problem. Therefore, she's had to improvise, change her routine around just a little bit. As we remember, the national championships last year, she had probably one of the most stunning routines of the championships. Very good. This is her forte. A little bit of a body break right there on the low bar. Working back up to the high bar. Here's a reverse heck being done in the opposite direction. That's a popular trend. And her dismount, double front, a little bit slow. I found that L Larissa wasn't as crisp as she right, usually right. is oh, on this event. She's a little tired. Yeah. Hey, you know, Coach uh, Leonard Isaacs, he, he said the same thing to me, yeah. Elfie, that she really yeah. isn't in the shape, conditioning-wise, uh, that she needs to be in. Light stretching gets, uh, her beam hit Just the okay. first American Cup, first international meet in the United States for Fontaine. The score for Cheney Humphrey on the ball at 9.2. And now our first look at Rustam Sharipov, 22 years old from Ukraine, tied for fourth in the preliminaries last night. He was a member of the gold medal unified team in 1992 and has a long resume, gymnastics resume, Tim. Such a great athlete. Tends to make some mistakes, though, when it really counts. However, he'll do a very unique vault, the only one in the competition. 
Lands much better today than he did yesterday. Very few people performing that. Now, you see, when he leaves the board, most of the gymnasts just flip over backwards. He's going to do a half twist right there onto the horse, so now he's flipping forwards as opposed to backwards. Very, very tricky, actually, a little girl from the former Soviet Union, Emilian Chick, a former world champion, invented that vault right there that Rustam just showed us. And the score for Larissa Fontaine of the uneven bars, a 9.162. So Larissa Fontaine competing in her first American Cup. The biggest meet of her life will be back to Orlando. Tations, Dominique Daz of the United States. Yelena Fiskoon in second place. And the updated men's standings. After four rotations, John Roethlisberger of the United States still trying to hold off the world champion, Vitaly Sherabo. And the women's leader, Dominique Dawes, warming up for her next apparatus, which will be on the beam. And for more on Dominique, let's go down to the floor and rejoin Marianne Gravelboy. Thanks, Stan. Last year here at the American Cup competition, Dominique Dawes had a disaster co disastrous competition. In the prelim preliminary, she hit only one event. She didn't even make it to the finals. But last night on the second event in the preliminaries, the bars, disaster struck again. This is Dominique's bar routine from last night in the preliminaries. She fell off on a move. Her coach said she never misses. Dominique was shocked and in tears, and Coach Kelly Hill stepped in to give her a big pep talk. You know you can. You know you can do the next two events. I'm not kidding. I swear I believe in you. Stay with your next two events, and you'll be fine. And it starts all over from scratch. All right, the routine was beautiful. I'll put the one with a boob on, and then we'll fix it next time. Come on, stay in there. Come on, keep it together. The fall ended up being a call to arms for Dominique. She won the beam, the floor, as well as the vault, and she ended up being number one. I think Dominique knows this meet is hers for the taking. And now Dominique Dawes getting set to take to the beam. You mentioned the great performance last night. Dominique called it one of her best ever, a 9.9. Dan, she's unquestionably one of the best in the world. In fact, she won the silver medal last year at the World Championships. I'll go so far as to say that she should have won the gold outright, but she was far too gracious about it. She said at the World Championships that the judges obviously saw that I was just second best. Remember, this was the apparatus that she had to really focus in on, especially after the uneven bars where she fell just prior to this last night. One of the best in the world. She has some outstanding difficulty. The first line coming up right here. for Dominique right here. Punch front. Just a little balance break there. I can't help but notice the maturity in Dominique, even over last year's World Championships. She is attacking this apparatus. One of the most difficult dismounts being performed in the world. She does it in combination. Two back handsprings in a row. Full twisting, double back. Almost perfect. Almost perfect. What a dynamite routine. She made a great correction. She throws the foot in the warm-up on trying to pull up. Okay, because your feet are a little off on your takeoff, but you've got to stand up. Good, good, good fight. A chance to seize the moment. Dominique Dawes with the absence of Shannon Miller today. Just like a coach, even making small little corrections, even after a flawless routine. Check out this dismount. The speed she generates in order to get a full twisting double back in. Stands it up, no problems. 
But, you know, you said, Elfie, that she has matured quite a bit. She had a couple of small errors in there, but it really didn't rattle her. She just dealt with the pressure and kept on going. No major mistakes after that. And the score for Dominique Dawes, 9.85. Senior in high school from Silver Spring, Maryland. Now Vitaly Sherba trying to continue his chase of American John Roethlisberger. You see his standing second after four rotations. Now ready to take to the parallel bars. And this event was where he really, really did a great job last night. He is so confident here. Big skills on the parallel bars works the entire apparatus both the end and the middle look at that double front little bit of a problem there boy but he he dealt with that so well his dismount double pike and a couple of steps Boy, you know, throughout the competition, Dan Vitale has just opened the door just to crack for John Roethlisberger. Now a trademark of Vitale Sherbo on the vault. We saw him nail that dismount cold. It's the last thing the judges see, the last thing they remember. And they remember two steps right there. Vitale Sherbo. Separation from the Soviet Union said there's good and bad to it. We'll talk about that more when we come back to Orlando. What's up, Jake? What up? Where's Cal? At the J-O-B, man. What? He's still flipping those burgers at Mickey D's. Thanks, Calvin. He says he has a plan, man. Meet the newest member of our management team, Calvin. Congratulations. Calvin. Oh, so weird, my boy, too. Oh. Like that. Yo, Calvin. May we help you? <laughs> Not much, man. Well, I'm out. Hey, yo, yo, Calvin. You know, what's the word on that job thing? Not for me. <laughs> for a friend of mine. Word. About 65 miles south of the nearest stoplight, and two miles up in the Rocky Mountain sky, you'll find skiers heaven, also known as Telluride Ski Mountain, where the skiing's perfect and the views are even better. And whether you're going to extremes or just going for a lesson, don't go without your visa card, because at Telluride Ski Mountain, they'll let you take the plunge, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. If you demand more from an aftershave than that same old alcohol burn, you need more than the same old aftershave. Sensitive from Old Spice. It's alcohol free because alcohol burns. That's why they took it out and put these cooling sensate scent. For real refreshment to go with that great scent. It's proof aftershave doesn't have to hurt to work. So be you sensitive or you might get burned. Take the heat out of aftershave. Demand proof. Try alcohol free sensitive from Old Spice. That must smell good. What's this? For you. How thoughtful. What else? But I already have Taster's Choice. You can't get too much of a good thing. Savor the sophisticated taste of Taster's Choice. I love these peaceful Sundays. Hi, Mom. Sunday, something unknown attacks the Sequest. It's coming around for another strike. How big is this thing? It's wrapped around us. Sequest 8, 7 Central, NBC Sunday. Sunday, Martin Short's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Danny Glover's stellar. Stay still. No, go! In the outrageous comedy, Pure Luck, Sunday on NBC. There is the leader after four rotations, John Roethlisberger out of the University of Minnesota and the United States calming himself with some music and the score for Vitaly Sherbo 9.375 well that certainly opens up the door once again for John Roethlisberger it's not a big score parallel bars is a little bit tougher than some of the other events to get that huge score but certainly once again he's giving John Roethlisberger the opportunity and there is Wang Dong of China third after four rotations he's not out of it and he's getting set to take to the parallel bars. As I said before, one of China's up-and-coming hopefuls. They really don't think he's quite ready for the spotlight yet, but they have great hopes for him in the future. 
Big double back somersault. Kind of looks like high bar nowadays. They're just flying in the air. He does two of them. The old underarms hurt just a little bit after his peril of our workout, I'd say. He's having some problems on this skill. The double pike in warm-ups couldn't quite land it. Same problem right there. The same step that we saw from Vitaly Sherman. Really got to nail that landing. 18-year-old Wang Dong is idol Li Ning. China's most decorated gymnast ever. He even wears the, the clothing line by Li Ning. In Greece. And in the 1993 European Junior. Wang Dong along with Xiao Ya, the other Chinese teammate, to uh, get a chance to visit their parents just twice a year. Uh, for just three weeks at a time, he takes a 14-hour train from the Beijing Training Center to see him. And, you know, before the competition, he told me that he was just a little bit tired, didn't feel like he was recuperating from the jet lag. And I traveled all over the world as a competitor myself, and the only time I ever felt like I stepped onto the floor not recovered was when I went to the People's Republic of China. Wang Dong, the eighth-ranked gymnast in China. Started gymnastics at the age of 10. Stopped for a year. He uh, wouldn't tell us why, Tim. We, uh, we kind of got a little bit nervous, too, Dan, when we really inquired. His coach was right there. And the score for Wang Dong, 9.275. So it seems that John Roethlisberger and Vitaly Sherba has turned into a two-horse race. Now let's go to our New York studios and join Ahmad Rashad for the Prudential Update. 1994 McDonald's American Cup. The men have completed four of their six rotations. And the leader of the United States, John Roethlisberger, competing in his first ever American Cup. He has about a 5 one hundredths lead over Vitaly Sherba, the world champion. A man who won six gold medals at the Barcelona Olympics in 92 and the leader after the women's two rotations. They'll have four rotations is Dominique Dawes. And chasing Dominique Dawes in second place from Belarus is Elena Piscoon, who just turned 16 years old, just her second time in the United States. Seventh in the all-around at the 93 Worlds. She qualified second last night, and we had a chance to talk with her. Very engaging young lady, who studied English for five years, and uh, her English has improved dramatically since the last time we saw her last year. Actually, her English was fantastic. I had a conversation with her just prior to the comp competition. She's very relaxed. She's impressed me. She She's actually not a very flashy gymnast. Uh, she's very simple, but her skill level, you really have to look closely. She does some amazing difficulty, and you'll see that on the balance beam. She has some incredible tricks that are some of the best in the world. But right now, 15-year-old Lilia Potkapayeva from Ukraine. And she is in fifth place after two rotations. And as you can see what she needs for third place. And she's ready now to perform on the balance beam. From Ukraine, please welcome Lilia Potkapayeva. Dan, there's not a whole lot that phases this athlete. She is so undisturbed by the audience, at least I was going to say that there was a distraction right there. She's usually very solid, at least we've had a chance to watch her all week in practice and last night in the competition. She's very cool. Extremely graceful. She has all the big elements as well. And what a major shocker this is. Wow. I didn't expect that at all. It, I was just going to say I've been able to just sit back, put my pen down, relax, and, and watch her. I can't believe she's fallen. Well, that's, that's two events in a row, Elfie. She had the problem on the uneven bars, and now we see it happening here once again. Nice combination right there. Front summing on the beam to immediate jump, seeing more and more combinations on the bounce beam. It's important, you have to forget about the fall, just put it in the back of your mind. There's still another minute left in the balance beam. She still has some very serious tricks to complete. 
remind you that uh, has to hurt even more since uh, Dominique Dawes has had an excellent beam routine. So Dominique Dawes uh, will lengthen her lead. Dan, she has to put, pull it all together. Her final move, dismount. Oh, she had trouble in the warm-up. She was able to get her feet underneath her. What a big surprise. A lot of mistakes, including a fall basically out of the competition. A lot of concentration errors. It looked like just minor bobbles just really threw her. We saw Dominique Dawes. She had a small little mistake, and she just recovered instantly. It wasn't the case in this routine. Very unfortunate. Well, as you can imagine, with only four inches to play with here, you have to be incredibly square, bang on with the balance beam, and she was totally off. We'll get a better look at it right here. Back handspring into her aerial move. You can see she's totally blind until right there when she grabs the balance beam, but she was way over to the left side of the beam. Absolutely no chance of even clawing her way back onto the beam. Lilia Putkapaeva, third in the beam last night. Will do much worse here in the all-around competition today. Fifth place after two rotations, but she will fall. Cheney Humphrey of the United States, sixth after four rotations. And Tim Daggett, the way he performed, especially last night in the preliminaries, I think we expected a little bit more out of uh, Cheney, and I think he did so himself, too. Well, certainly, Cheney had a big mistake on the pommel horse and just really hasn't shown in this competition what he's capable of. But this right here is just an incredible routine. This is probably his best event. I'd say that this is the toughest, most difficult bar, parallel bar, exercise in the entire competition. There's one skill here that the bars look like they're almost going to come down. <laughs> Cheney's certainly comfortable with taking his time. He's not gonna go till he's good and ready. He just manhandles the bar, and here is that skill I talked about. Watch this, a giant double back. He just yanks on those bars. So hard to explain just how difficult a skill like that is. Oh, there's a couple small errors right there. Once again, he's a little off balance here, too. And takes a hop on the landing. You know, the whole routine, he was right on the edge of the envelope, just a little bit off balance throughout, and that translates into a tenth of a point here, a tenth of a point there. Not a great exercise for Cheney. 